Mr. Jason, what's up, dude? Not much. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. It's been a minute. I know, right? So how does, uh, have you always wanted to like jump on obstacles and swing from vine to vine? Uh, actually, no. I didn't no? know about the show until 2018. <laughs> We're uh, talking about American Ninja Warrior, by the way, guys. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know about it until we found a Groupon. 2018? Yeah. A yeah, Groupon. Yep. Who's we? Uh, me and two of my college friends who were gymnasts at my school. Okay. Uh, were you a gymnast growing up? No. No. I played zero sports. Zero sports. Nothing. Like you didn't like excel in PE in high school or anything like no. that? No. I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> I usually just went and I goofed around and then I was like, okay. So in, tw- in 2018, you found a Groupon for what? A gym? Yeah. Okay. It was actually on the same street as my college. Okay. Where did you go to school? Uh, Quinnipiac. I have no it's clue in um, it Hamden, Connecticut, right outside of New Haven. It snows over there. A lot. A lot. Snowed in often. Okay. Yeah. How did um, you get to LA? I went to grad school in San Diego. Okay, there we go. Yeah. So Sweet. Just bumped up, you know? Bumped up? Yeah. There we go. I had a job, and I was like, you know what? LA, why not? Heck Let's yeah. Let's do it. That's what's up. So, so you found this gym. Mm-hmm. One of my friend's moms mm-hmm. is actually obsessed with the show. She was like, you guys, there's a gym on the street of your college. It's on Groupon. So she was like, I'm going to send you the link. Okay. And I'm like, okay. They were gymnasts. And I was like, whatever. But you didn't know about the show at the time. You just no. saw on a Groupon. Yeah. Okay. We just saw the Groupon. She had known about the show. And we're like, let's try it out. Like, whatever. So yeah. we went. And like, I could do some flips just from learning, teaching myself on the trampoline and stuff. How do you teach yourself how to do flips? I just had a trampoline. I would go outside and just huck myself around for a yeah. couple hours. Did you ever eat shit? All the time. Because... Um, I landed my first backflip probably this time last year, uh-huh. and I was just sending it on the grass, but I got like PTSD now because I landed on my head and I heard like a loud crack, and I was fine, yeah. but it's like, I don't know if I could do that again. Yeah, I don't go backwards, only forwards. Only forwards? Yeah. Is that safer? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I just feel more comfortable going forwards. <laughs> How so? I don't like, know. Can I you like protect it. yourself like when you go forward? I just feel like if you miss, you're going to land on your butt. You're fa- that's facts yeah. and you have to send it forward like yeah the, the momentum like you have to go and it's forward. just easier to throw it forward okay i might have to go with you and go send send front flips Send front flips all day okay yeah. so you're just like learning front flips on um trampoline yeah so you and know then, how to do some stuff yeah and then in college my friends used to make me do it on the grass at parties oh ah, so it's a flex a little bit kind of <laughs> they were like we can't do that we're gymnasts like we would never do it on the grass and i'm like guys it's easy and they're just doing like back tucks and back hands but they the can't club. do a front flip they wouldn't do it on the grass no hmm why is that they, to get they hurt? were too scared they, they had to point their toes correctly and everything like that yeah. while you're just like where's it where's that happen like, like, on my butt yeah, we're like five shots deep and i'm throwing touch cheers sir cheers thank you okay so i'm assuming that you and your friends um went to this gym yeah we went to the gym and we were doing flips on the side yeah and the coach pulled us aside they were like uh like a coach they have they had like ninja coaches at the time 2018 yeah Yeah. it was a good ninja gym okay so they have coaches and they were like he was like hey guys uh you're flipping and we're like yeah he's like uh try this so we would just try this we would do it and he's like what's this like just like a different type of flip or like a different obstacle he'd be like just go up and try it i'm Mm -hmm. like okay He'd be like, wait, you guys are doing it. And we're like, okay. And then we would just go mess around. And then I had physics every Tuesday and Thursday, which is when adult open gym was. So I would skip physics every so often so I could go play in the gym. For grad school? No, undergrad, actually. In Connecticut? Yeah. It was my senior year of college. Okay. So I'd be like... Oh, so then a warrior gym was in Connecticut? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Connecticut next to our school. So I would just skip physics mm-hmm. and I'd go to Ninja. Okay. I thought you were going to tell me some cool story about you learned something in physics and you like related it to Ninja. Absolutely not. <laughs> I was just skipping physics to go play at the gym. Okay. So I was like, oh, this is fun. Yeah. Right? Like I get the hang of this. Was this like a once a week thing or? Probably every other week. Every other week. Okay. But by then it was already second semester. So it was like February, March. February or March. Okay. Yeah. So like the show was coming up for the competitors and the semester was ending so we were like okay like i'll go play around one of our friends and what season is this now is it like has this has it been won yet has did like, did isaac and like uh yeah. the other dude like already conquer it i guess yeah okay. it was either season 10 or 11 i think 10 was the year that they like finished it so then it was 11 it was 11 yeah okay 
So we would just go mess around. The one one of our friends got asked to be on like the team, the competitive team there, but the other two of us, we didn't have the time. She didn't have mm. class then. So the competitive team at the gym. Yeah. Okay. So they had like open night rec league competitive league so this was a thing already in 2018 yeah, 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 for sure this so is... they had they had teams they had yeah. competitions mm-hmm. not just like the show right no there was a whole there's probably two or three leagues outside of the show at this point oh at, really right now at that point in time no what? now there's like f- five or six really yeah you have like new england ninja league you have i mean the bay area ninja league you have world ninja league you have yeah there's like six seven eight so there's not like one avenue to like accomplish or like get to like a top tier level anymore i mean the those top tier ninjas who dedicate their entire life to ninja (laughs) Mm -hmm. usually win all those comps no really yeah so they they do like all of them yeah okay yeah yeah they're usually different times a year but sometimes you do have to pick like there's a league that's more West Coast, and there's a league that's more East Coast. Okay. And, like, the East Coast League obviously holds our nationals and worlds in the so, East Coast, yeah. and then usually the West Coast one's in Vegas. So, like, there's a big differentiation in the country. Heck, yeah. So, after you decide to, like, just skip class and just, yeah. like, send flips and learn all these things, like, what, what are the first types of movements that you're learning, like, yeah. while you're at the gym? I think the first movements was lache, so bar to bar. What, what do you mean? Like, just like so when, s- sending bar, grab, yeah, grab, bar, grab, bar, grab, grab. Okay. Yeah, but like back then, you know, you take three or four swings and you throw and you catch, and then three or four swings and you throw and you yeah. catch. Like, it's a very slow progression. Very, I didn't realize very small how hard gaps. it was. I tried it at like just Venice, and they're pretty far over oh, there. Oh, those are eight feet. Those are big. Yeah. So, those are big. like, I, I, I did took three swings, and I just like, I think I landed like just like basically just flat on the ground. Yeah. On the ground. <laughs> I was happen. like, I don't know if I like this. Yeah, no. And those bars suck because <laughs> they're so rip thin. up your hands. They're so bro. thin. They rip up your hands. The ninja bars of the ninja jam are like like this. Okay. Those are like yeah, you know they're I mean? tiny. Yeah. So it's like they're a easy grab. to do like muscle ups and stuff. Yeah, though. for sure. Like the the thinner the bar, the muscle ups are easier. Yeah. Stuff like that because you can wrap. Yeah, fully. Yeah. So you're what's the term called? when you're grabbing the bar like swinging lache lache yeah okay so, so you're learning a lache flying bar to bar flying bar to bar like, we were doing like three feet so it was to the point where you could honestly just like hold one bar and reach okay but he'd be like no like i want you to let go with both hands and okay. catch the next one so we would and then the first night he made us do the wall the warped wall okay because it's a very simple obstacle it's literally just run you know your steps and mm-hmm. you, you jump and you catch there's so many people who can't get it though <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> 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 and that's one of the obstacles that I just kind of set back and question because every gym in the country has a warped wall. Yeah. So it's like people shouldn't be missing the warped wall anymore. Yeah. I, 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 cause I think I watched like season, I think like five through 10, I was like into it at that period of time. And that's like, like the OG seasons, OG seasons, yeah, for like, sure. uh, like little Casey and yeah. like all, all those guys. And, um, I remember a lot of them couldn't get the warped wall and, uh, it was just funny because like nowadays like little kids are doing it like i'll see like ninja gyms and like yeah. little kids are sending it i'm like whoa that's crazy yeah the little kids these days like 14 15 16 are absolutely just dominating everyone else yeah like, there's no because it's still relatively compare. new like it's yeah. not it's like what a 20 year sport yeah. not even exactly and these kids grew up in the gym from yeah. age like six or seven now 10 yeah. years in so it's just like you can't compare yeah us so, adults to the little kids who yeah. just grew up. So doing what it. besides other besides lacheing, like what other like movements do you learn like within like the first like month or so of training or a couple months? Yeah, I would say lacheys. I mean pull ups. Okay. Like I wasn't really capable of doing pull ups when I went. Yeah. Really? Um oh yeah. No. I was weak. Really? Okay. I mean I still don't really do pull ups. Yeah, you just rock climb. It's the same yeah. thing. Same thing. But like I can only do maybe <laughs> like ten pull ups at a time. If that. That's still good. Yeah. So Agility mm-hmm. um, was definitely big because it's lower body, so it doesn't take as much actual technique, okay. more just like understanding how the obstacle works. Okay. Whereas like the upper body ones are like brand new techniques that you don't mm-hmm. understand. I mean, agility, you're kind of just running, right? You're running across sure. this, or you're running through this. So mm-hmm. that's definitely big and balance too, because that's... How do you train balance and agility? Like um, for ninja training? Agility would be just like quick obstacles that are balanced basically, mm-hmm. just quick. And then balance would be like slower balance courses. So there's like different little balance obstacles. Like mm-hmm. they cut up PVC pipes or they have like teeter totters that you can go on or these little bars. So like mm-hmm. there's, and we just set up all across the gym and you just back Pull and across forth, the back gym. and forth. Yeah. And it's for how long would you train that for? I mean, sometimes we do speed, sometimes we do length. Okay. 
It just depends. And how on do you night. determine that? Like, is there a coach like just telling you what to do? Yeah, a lot of gyms have like strict regimens. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, it's like curriculums. Like, can you run me through that at all? Yeah, I mean, you just start from your basics and you go to your more advanced skills. Okay. So, like I said, like shorter liches, the bigger liches. There's different workout circuits that they do. There's mm-hmm. different um, burnouts that they do mm-hmm. every week. Uh, I don't really know the. There's different tumbling too, also okay. like different parkour moves that help with ninja moves. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you, uh, how how about the salmon ladder? <laughs> I don't really love the salmon ladder. To be honest, it just hurts your shoulders. Really? Yeah. I feel like you, a lot of them, a lot of people keep them at like ninety degrees now, and they just like boom, yeah. boom, boom. And there's there's boom. different ways of doing it. Some are, go here. Yeah. Some switch grip. Yeah, a lot of people switch grip. I do. You switch yeah. grip? I can't do it this way. I tried last week when I was at the gym, and I was like, mm, this is not comfy. Yeah. Um, and some go backwards now. Okay. They go up like this. Really? Yeah. Don't like that either. I, I feel like, I, I guess the only reason why to do that would be because like you're curling it in. Mm-hmm. Like it's a curl out, curl in, curl out, curl in. And it's supposed to be more efficient. But I, I feel like, like it's it. a, one of the hardest movements, right? Like Salmon ladder? Yeah. Yeah. It's whole body. It's yeah. definitely like total body because you have to like kip. You know what I'm saying? Grab, like, kip, yeah, grab. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's but like it's it's also so far into like the obstacle course in most yeah. times. Like yeah. it's not like in the beginning. No, it's, it's, like, the it's like literally at the end. But it's, like, it's also one of those obstacles that, like, if you do mess up, like, you're done. Yeah. But it's also, like, every gym has it, so we're training it every day. Yeah. So, like, that's one of the ones that's kind of, like, a, not a gimme, but it's, like, something that you know it's going to be there, so you know how to train it. Sure. And you know it's going to be the same every year. How do you know, like, when it, how it's going to be set up? Because, like, it's still relatively new, like, this sport. Mm -hmm. And, like, after Isaac uh, and what's the other guy who conquered it? Uh, Your Greg something? I don't know, but um, after they like, I guess completed the course, they were like the first two athletes to finish it after season ten. Like, um, they had to I- invent like a new course, right? Yeah. Or like make something new, and every year it's probably different. Yeah. So like, you see some reoccurring obstacles for sure, but mm-hmm. every year they do throw a new handful out you. Yeah. And like that's usually what gets everyone. Is yeah. Because they're like. So they actually do this obstacle design now uh-huh. where it's like people watching the show, like send in their designs and then oh, the fabrication well, team. Really? Yeah. will pull like a few of them aside and actually make them look at them and then decide mm. which ones they want to make and how they want to make them and what, what they want to keep, what they don't want to keep. Yeah. So every season that happens. Mm-hmm. Um, also there's actually a warehouse out here in Chatsworth, um, where they actually make the obstacles and that's where we test them. Oh, no way. Yeah. Are, do you, are you, do you, have you tested them like so, there? Yeah. So I did one season competing and then last season they you were like, Hey, let's next test. year. No, I tested for last. Oh, the I was on season. two seasons ago. The current season that's just finished. Okay. Yeah. You were I testing those in obstacles. Chatsworth, yeah. Okay. Um, and it's like, it's actually really scary. Yeah. Cause it's just like this big warehouse and it's just like these obstacles hanging and there's just some mats on the ground. Sure. It's like the show is so pretty and like put together so well and like oh i think i saw it on your instagram was that the was that the testing the one where there's just mats on the ground no that's just a gym okay that's just a gym. yeah that's just a gym <laughs> but like it's just like this empty warehouse you know like mm-hmm. the show is so aesthetically pleased with banners and lights and, yeah and you get to this gym and sometimes it's not even painted like they're just raw just really like absolutely raw obstacles i mean i feel like because if they don't work they're just gonna chuck it out why make it pretty exactly what they right? do like there was one that we tested it was actually just on this season it's called yeah. tetherball stage one and it's this big big drum mm-hmm. and what you do is you climb up the side of it and there's a rope mm-hmm. and you just swing around the rope until you get to a platform but it doesn't stop you have to uh, time it and stop at the right point it sounds hard and in the gi- <laughs> in the testing they had these big mats like this tall okay and they covered the entire floor with them and they said everyone hop up and just get off however you can so we literally got up, swung, and we're just flying across the gym. Like, the people who work there are catching us so we you don't fall into the concrete. You have to get paid to do that, right? No. No? <laughs> no pay. No. You're just for fun. Yeah. For shit. Yeah, but then it's like you also just, like... Got to witness You get to witness and experience it. stuff that no one else... Like, there was maybe six of us, seven of us, so it's like... I feel like the liability is, like, not in your favor. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but they make sure they make sure they cover you like for sure, and there's like obstacles that we test there that don't never will make the show because oh so was not... that a cool experience did you enjoy yeah, it yeah I think it gave me a lot of confidence for future seasons and how many days like were you there testing it 
Well, there would be like once a week, every other week. Okay. While they built the obstacles. Okay. And then they would progress the obstacles and keep working on them and start finishing mm-hmm. them. And then they would come back in and be like, okay, we changed this, this, and this. Like, yeah. just so you know, when you're up there, like, this is going to feel different. This is going to feel like this. And then you run them three or four times. And they're like, okay, good job. Like, sure. moving on. There'll be like three or four per. Yeah. Um, we actually did one that was crazy. It was like, they had a forklift all the way up and a ladder up. A forklift. What? That, what was forklift again? Like those things that they use to move pallets. Okay. And it was probably like 35 feet in the air. Okay. And there's a big like six foot tall crash pad. Okay. Like an airbag. And so are you on the forklift? Yeah. You go up on the forklift or okay. the ladder and it was just probably 45, 50 feet in the air. Okay. And there's just a, like a stuntman airbag at the bottom. Oh, you just had to jump. No, there was an obstacle, but they didn't know if it would work or not. So they're like, okay, we don't really know what to tell you guys. Just go for it. And we said, huh? And of course, they like to mess with me. On, I don't know why I got this job on set, <laughs> but it's always gross when you're up first. And I'm like, me? I'm going now? And that probably gave you some confidence for sure. Like, if you're the first person doing it. No. Like, no, like in terms of like the the fear of like, like you're the first one, yeah. like the, that feeling. Yeah. Because you're going to get like butterflies, nervousness, yeah. like all those things. I feel like you going first is like, yeah, you know. And it's cool because, like, the, you know the producers trust you somewhat, you know, yeah. to try. So they'll be like, Grossman, you're up. You probably got, like, more, um, I guess, like, close with, like, people around the crew that, oh, yeah. like, for future it could for be, sure. like, cool. Could be helpful, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, they'll be like, Grossman, you're up. That's what's up, dude. So you were, uh, you were training in Connecticut, yeah. right? In lightly. Lightly. And what, I guess, how did you go from there to, like, interviewing for the show? Like, what made you yeah. inspired to do the show? Like, what what was that like? Or, like, so, how did that process go? I did that. I messed around at the, I would say I messed around at the gym. Like, I wouldn't even say I was training because I was just there having fun. Mm-hmm. Moved to San Diego. Okay. Went to grad school there for, like, eight and weeks. And did you stop for a while? Yeah, like, I didn't okay. train at all. Okay. Eight weeks. Lived in San Diego for, what like, study for? four in months. In grad school. Uh, medical sales. Okay. So it was well, like a medical sales track. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, four months I was there for about because mm-hmm. I went there before I stayed after I lived with family. So I was just chilling there. Got a job here. Mm-hmm. Didn't go to the ninja gym at all up here. Didn't do any working out. So between 2018, 2019, you didn't do anything. No. I mean, I would say I went to the gym maybe three times, four times and just played okay. like I played. And fitness, no fitness yet. Okay, no, and nothing. then 2020 was COVID. So I'd say maybe the end of 2019. Like okay. October, November of 2019. 2019. I was at the gym just dabbling around, you know, okay. just like trying things out again, like seeing what I could do. And then the beginning of 2020, COVID hit in March. So this was probably around February. Okay. Um, I was at the gym, and there's a girl that I train with. Her name's Olivia. She was 16 shouts at the time. Olivia. What? I said shouts out, Olivia. <laughs> she was 16 at the time. <laughs> Uh, She was basically the best female in the world at the time. She was number one, like unstoppable. Okay. Uh, Just crushing all these comps events. She was just like insane. Was she on the show a few times? No, because the age limit then was 19. Oh, what is it now? She was on, now it's 15, but it's invite only for the 15 to 19, and then you can apply at 19. Okay. Um, She was on A&W Junior though. Okay. Once or twice. Um, So I was training, and her mom was there. And her mom pulled me aside and she's like, hey, like, I see you and Olivia are like clicking and like you guys are having fun. And I'm like, yeah, like Olivia's cool. She's like, do you realize like you're natural at this? And I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, I can tell you don't train, but you understand what's going on. You know how to move. You know, you know what's going on. And I was like, oh, cool. Like, thanks. She's like, what do you think about training with like the competitors? And I'm like, for the show? She was like, yeah, like, I think you should come in. They would do after hours and like off days, like because there's adult open gym and then they would have their own private training sessions because our friend owns a gym. Okay. So she was like, I think you start coming to that. And I was like, that's a lot. And I was like, <laughs> I can't even get through three obstacles. Like, she's like, no, you need to start coming. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I did that for like a month. And I was like, wait, like I actually understand how this works. Uh-huh. Like I understand my body. And then she pulled me aside again. She's like, you're really getting good. Like keep doing it. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, okay. When did you really like it? Like really enjoy it? During When COVID hit. Okay. So when COVID hit, there was a gym out in San Bernardino that didn't close because mm-hmm. it wasn't technically in L.A., so they didn't have to. Yeah. Mm. L.A. kind of got crazy, especially towards the end and stuff yeah. like that, like masks in, like, saunas and masks in, like, soul cycle rooms it and everything like insane. that. Like, and, like, climbing. We did climbing, climbing masks. too, yeah. Everything. Yeah, so when COVID hit, we were, like, like two or three days before 
the actual shutdown. We knew the shutdown was coming. It was mm-hmm. like everyone was talking about it. So we all collected stuff from the gym. We we're like, we're bringing this home. And we're like, we're going to Zoom every day and or, practice, and practice okay. with each other what to keep each take? other accountable. I took a PVC pipe, um, some holds for the ceiling. Did you use them? Did you did you? I did actually did a little them? bit. I okay. did, yeah, yeah. I had stuff on my ceilings. A hangboard I ordered. A hangboard? Is that like the rock climbing? Like yeah, the, it has like the different f- slots. Yeah, for, fingers yeah. and stuff. Barely. I barely used any of it. And then like a 25-pound dumbbell. Okay. That's all I brought. And I was like, I'm going to get so strong over this quarantine. I love whatever. that. Um, so I took that home. We would text. We had a group chat. We text each other like three times maybe. Yeah. Maybe max. And we're like, we're not doing this. Like we're not working sure. out. So we came up with this idea. We're going to tarp the windows of the gym. Tarp? Yeah. Okay. So we tarped oh, everything. Oh, so no one could see. Right. So no one could see in. So we tarped everything at the gym, blacked out all the windows, covered everything, and we started training there over COVID. Oh, no way. So we would drive, I would drive out an hour, 45 minutes every day to the gym and just train. We'd a train. lot of people did that. I mean, like in yeah. like different gyms and stuff I would stuff say like there was that. like eight or nine of us, 10 of okay. us who would train consistently. Nice. Um, and it would be like... Usually after noonish, like four or five till maybe like one or two in the morning. Okay. We would just train Wait, all night. Wait, four or five to one or two in the morning. Yeah, we would just train and hang out. And all there's night. like you guys couldn't work or anything at the time. Right. Like, no one's working. Well, I was working remotely, like okay. through Zoom and everything. So like I was like, hey guys, I'll make it when I can. And she was in school, so she was doing her schoolwork during the day. For Olivia. Yeah. Okay. So we just would go at like five, six, yeah. I would until drive on the like, highway like, like 12 or one. Oh, at least three, four wow, sometimes. Really? Yeah. We'd nap at the gym. Like how we just, how much better do you see your skills during that period of time? Because, went, because yeah. like that's a lot of hours. I excelled like you wouldn't even believe. Yeah. Like I was killed during COVID. I've never been in such good shape. I was absolutely crushing it during COVID. Sure. Um, we were doing like 18, 20 obstacle courses. Wow. Yeah. Like, and like, you, like not missing a beat. No, we were, and we were running them back to back to back to back. And then we would do burnouts and legs and agility. We were insane during yeah. COVID. Like we did not stop. Um, so that's when I was like, okay, like this is my sport. Uh-huh. And Karen again was like, you're so good now. Karen's she was Olivia's like, mom. Yeah. Okay. She was like, you're pushing Olivia so much harder than anyone mm-hmm. has. Because Karen's not a good name to have during COVID. I know. I know. <laughs> she made us call her K. Okay. There we go. She didn't want to be Karen anymore. So she did know that. She changed all of her social media to K. <laughs> I'm like, you're dramatic, but I get it. <laughs> and then they were dope they would like bring me food to the gym or like yeah. we'd go over there before and eat she would cook for us or after and eat and like oh wow we just she's like, basically bonded. like a mom to you oh she's my i tell her all the time she's my ninja mom oh that's what's up yeah and then she took us to comps she took me to utah northern california wow like, we'd just travel with her because she was like i mean just hop in let's go yeah so i got to compete with her and like the, the whole crew how was uh competing the first time i was garbage yeah Actually, okay, let me take that back. I wasn't garbage, but you could tell I was inexperienced. Okay, where was the first competition Utah. At? Utah. Which was hard because the elevation okay. was different, too. Oh, so, so it was outside? No, it's inside. Okay, but, but it was still, still, yeah, it still, it still affects, affects you. you. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, for sure. Like, you just get pumped so much quicker because you're so much higher. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess what was the feeling like? It almost, we did train hard in the gym, like we were competing. Yeah. It was just different because there was so many people mm. watching. Because Utah What's so didn't many take people? it. Couple hundred, fifty, three hundred, thousand, a hundred. Yeah, okay. probably like a hundred people throughout the gym. Yeah, kids, adults, whatever. Um, it's just something I didn't experience. Mm. People were watching. The points actually mattered. It wasn't just a whiteboard in the gym with yeah. all of our numbers compared. Have you like, done anything with like a lot of people watching you before? No. So this was like the first time. Yeah. Because I didn't play sports or anything. Yeah. So it was like everyone's watching. So it was like me. a new feeling. Yeah. Okay. Um, and there was a bunch of obstacles there that I just had never practiced because I wasn't to that skill level quite yeah. yet of like, I could do all the obstacles, but not in the way that they had set them up. Mm-hmm. So there was just different ways. And I mean, I made it through most of them. Like, I think I only missed three obstacles on the course. So like, I was like, oh, so can you continue to go on the, on these competitions? You can in continue these, yeah. in these ones. You get three, three misses. Okay. Three misses in and you're done. Them, yeah. Okay. So I was like, I walked away and I was like, wait, like, this is pretty cool. Like. I think I could do this more seriously. Yeah. So then that's also when I picked up a little bit more, mm-hmm. even after that introduction to Ninja, I was like, yeah, this is cool. Yeah. Like I can continue this. And then a couple months of training more and then it was time for uh, show applications. Okay. How, how was that process? Like, what do you do for that? How do you apply? So you apply, there's like a whole bunch of written requirements. Like okay. 
your whole life you write out. Like they ask you like every little detail you can imagine about your life, where you went to school, where you were raised, who you're raised by, your favorite pastimes, what you do for work, who your best friend is, who your siblings are. Like they go top. They everything. Know everything. Why? why? Why is that? Why do you need that for like a ninja, ninja course? Because so much of the show is about personality and story. Sure. Um, that they just want to figure out who you are first. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have the video aspect, which is a three minute video. And I usually do about a minute and a half, two minutes of ninja videos. And then about a minute and a half, a minute of just talking or so, walking to the uh, gym. Okay. So yeah. Um, and then photos. What, what did you submit? Like what was your type of video that you did? Yeah. So I just, it's like a highlight reel, honestly, for any other sport. It's like, okay. you want to put your best foot forward. You want to put all your big skills, all your harder skills, uh, mini course runs, uh-huh. um, adventures you've been on with other ninjas. You know, it's like just compiling like a, a flashy highlight okay. reel. Cause cool. you want to make yourself. Did you make it yourself? Did you did you oh, edit yeah. it? You put just, it on like I, a, iMovie or yeah. what? They don't they don't care about like the professionalism or anything. They just yeah. they just want to see your like interesting to watch. Okay. Um, I actually filmed a bunch of it in the hospital that I work mm. at. Oh yeah. I did like a bunch of like TikTok transitions like with like sheets and stuff. Like Heck yeah. it was cool. Honestly, I think I killed the first one. <laughs> I was like, this is cool, because like I like threw the blanket, took the blanket off. I was in a different room, like from my house to the hospital like it came out good nice. honestly what was your reaction when you like found out you got on so this was wild um i was actually in the or uh-huh. working and um you don't get cell service you only get wi-fi okay so i don't get phone calls right yeah so it just goes straight to voicemail yeah but then i got an email from the head producer mm-hmm. i was like hey i've been trying to get a hold of you please call me when you get a chance in my email and i'm like <clears throat> i said no what is this so I go upstairs and I sit down because I was like, okay, I need to just breathe for a second before I call him. I call him and he's like, Jason, listen, I'm really disappointed in you. Like, this just isn't a good look for you. And I'm like, what? He's like, well, your voicemail box is full. I can't even leave you a voice message. And he's like, and you're not answering your phone. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, just destroy me. Why don't you like, just pull me apart. And I was like, I'm so sorry, Peter. Like, uh, sorry like i was just like <laughs> sitting there like uh like i just screwed up my whole chance yeah he's like it's okay whatever like that's in the past like we'll go forward from here and i'm like okay like what's up he's like i'm just calling to congratulate you on your <laughs> casting to american ninja warrior season 14 congratulations and i'm like <laughs> you know what i you're mean you're at like, work are you like yelling screaming mortified and, shit? <laughs> and i'm at like work and i had told this we were like almost in the middle of a surgery yeah and i told the surgeon i was like i'll be right back like i have to go make this phone call yeah and I came back down and they're like, what happened? Like, what's going on? And I told them and they stopped the surgery and everyone started cheering and going crazy. In the oh, room. So it was someone's really just cool. like out on the table and they're like cheering for Jason. Yeah. Let's go. No, they were freaky out in the alarm. That's I was exactly like, this what is happened cool. or what? No. Yeah. For <laughs> sure. They like, put everything down and they're like screaming. And I'm like, okay guys, like let's get back to work. That's hilarious. Yeah. So he basically called, gave me all the details, wow. the rundown of the season, how mm-hmm. everything works and all this stuff. And then I was like, Ooh, like this is, and then I went home and I was like, this is real. Like yeah. it was, I want to say January Okay. and you have till March. Mm-hmm. So then I was like, okay, like I have a month and a half to just train, to just grind. Yeah. Grind. So I worked all day and then I would train all night. Yeah. Like almost every day. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I definitely overtrained. Yeah. Absolutely. How did you do actually on the, I, so qualifiers, I did really well. Did you do the first, did you pass the first round or? Yeah. So I finished 17th out of 80. Okay. Uh, you had to be top 30 to move on. Okay. Moved on to semifinals. Semifinals didn't go as well. Okay. Um, so qualifiers was in a dome in Tacoma. Okay. Daytime. Daytime. In a bubble, right? Like we're quarantined basically. Oh shit! We're so this is like during COVID. That this they, is they did this. Twenty twenty one. Yeah. So the yeah yeah like coming so, out and, of COVID. And, yeah, yeah. Come, but still like it's still pretty hard restrictions. Yeah. So we were yeah, in COVID tests every day probably. Oh yeah, COVID tests yeah. twice in the week before you flew in. When yeah. you got there, you have to wear masks everywhere. You, they were like, you can't leave the hotel. I mean, some of us did go get food and stuff, sure. but you weren't supposed to leave the hotel. Yeah. Um, on set, six feet apart, I'm talking like there's squares on the floor where you're allowed to stand. So you can't talk to anybody or... I, I mean, mean, you could, but you were just like screaming. Okay. Um, through a mask? <laughs> through a mask, yeah. Um, daytime, though. That's okay. the key right there. Daytime. So you're on set for like a day and a half, but you're up there. We were there for like four or five days. Mm-hmm. Um, 
day one you get there day two is interviews day three is competing day four you go home okay um come back two weeks in between qualifiers and semifinals okay and where was where did you compete at where is this at the tacoma dome in tacoma washington yeah. okay um so we did that um finished 17th out of 80 moving on and where was semifinals at los angeles oh it's here universal back lot like right here yeah exactly sick in the new york new york strip okay mm -hmm. i think uh this guy who i work at the gym with he competed that season too then his name is uh hunter he has like really long hair crazy big dude i don't know if you know did he yeah he said he competed then i don't even know him oh that's he doesn't bad. he doesn't uh compete in like gyms and stuff he doesn't like train yeah but i would have known that he was oh well, sure if I saw later. Picture, yeah yeah um came here <clears throat> it's a different game it's nighttime yeah. mm -hmm. so filming's from sunset to sunrise okay so i'm talking we get call times like why 11. was it so late because they like it dark out so they can adjust the lighting and make it look mm. cooler the lighting and that kind of fucks up the athletes though no oh <laughs> The people who don't have jobs don't care though. Like if you work in the ninja gym, it's all fine and dandy because yeah. you don't go to work till five p.m. anyway. So yeah. they're just chilling. Us people who work real jobs are like, just like zombies on set. So you to, um, and you had to go to work the next day, maybe. I took off. No, <laughs> yeah. no working. But I if this season, yeah, I'm taking off. Yeah. If, if it happens, um, when it happens, zo there you go. <laughs> zombie, I'm telling you, zombie. Like we uh, we got hotels at the Hilton, Universal okay. City, right there. And um, we would just close our curtains and sleep all day or just lay in bed all day and try and sleep. Yeah. And then stay up all night with all the other competitors and just like mess around the hotel. Sure. Like run around. Um, this season, I don't think I'll do that. I think mm -hmm. I'm just going to sleep at night. I think I got better quality of sleep mm -hmm. and I would do better just staying up one night late rather than doing all that nonsense. I would never sure. do that again. Yeah. Um, call time was like 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. that you stroll into set. For you. Yeah. Right. Because it's different for everybody. Yeah, there's two waves. Okay. So the younger kids, there's like a bunch of laws with youth on set. So mm -hmm. the younger kids have to be offset by midnight or something like that. So they all had to compete first. Right. They all compete first. And there was like maybe 12 of them. Mm -hmm. So them and a couple adults go at like 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. So like right when it's dark enough to film, they start. Yeah. Um. So we were 11 o'clock. We started at like 12. We get there. We have to do like hero shots and more B-roll and a bunch of other stuff on the film. And then you run through the course rules. You see one person demo each obstacle. And then you get put in this big tent. Oh, so you get to see someone demo it. Mm -hmm. Okay. You so see that, a demo. Okay. You, you don't see that on TV. No, 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 no. They don't show the demo on TV. Okay. But it's hard because the demoers are the people who tested the course uh -huh. all week. Yeah. So they know they've been doing these obstacles for three or four days. Yeah. So they know exactly how to do it. They know exactly how they want to do it. That's a good thing for you to for see that, it. No, for them it is. Because they've how been so? practicing on it. Yeah, but you get to analyze like how they're doing it. Yeah, but it's it's harder because you think they do it with ease, mm -hmm. but really they they fine tune each obstacle so much because they've seen so many people do it and fail mm -hmm. that they just have this massive advantage. Sure. Um, they know how heavy the obstacle is. They know how it moves. And you can't talk to them about it or anything like no. that. You just get to see them do it. See them do it. They're right. in like they're they're in their own world. We're in our own world. You okay. don't you don't interact with them. Sweet. And if you do, you're like you can get kicked off the show. Okay. Um, you can talk to other competitors who touch the course. Yeah. But it's like I wouldn't do an obstacle the way someone else does an obstacle necessarily. Yeah. Like we all. I mean, work it depends on like body weight. Body or weight. Like yeah. Like mobility. Right. What you're things. good at. What you're bad at. So it's like you can talk to five people, and mm -hmm. all five of them could have done the obstacle a different way. Sure. So it's like you got to find who's. I mean, most of the time your training partners are yeah. who you would talk to. Yeah. But only one of my training partners made it to semifinals with me. No. Yeah. And he was after me. Okay. So. There was a, the obstacle, the second obstacle in my season mm -hmm. on my semifinals night. 11 of the 30 people fell on it, including me. Yeah. Really high percentage. Super high percentage. Yeah, almost like, 50%. Yeah, almost 50%. Yeah, fell on that obstacle. And um, it is what it is, you know? Like, that's just ninja. Okay. And how many people from the 30 move on? 15. And so it's basically the time that you got to get there. Right. So and, it's furthest fastest. Okay. And so you didn't, you didn't get there as quickly. That's really it. To, yeah. to, for you not to move on to the finals basically. some people moved on i think from obstacle five and on uh -huh. yeah okay so how was that feeling to <clears throat> actually compete 
on like TV and like on the stage. Like if you just go back to qualifiers and you can yeah. like uh, as well as like semifinals. Yeah. Like how was that feeling? Because like you went just if you rewind like three four years ago, you're just a kid in Connecticut, just, just like yeah. down the street trying out this like what the heck is this gym to competing on at the time probably the highest stage of like ninja training. Yeah. Um. I think I physically and mentally remember semifinals more than qualifiers just okay. because i mean it's just like the craziest feeling yeah it was remember, probably a lot more people right uh not no because it was covid year there oh, was okay. no audience no audience no audience no um it's just that i had been through it once and i now understood what it was like to be on set mm -hmm. qualifiers i mean i remember stepping up on the platform and like waving and seeing my family and then the next thing you know i'm in the water like four minutes later Oh, shit. I don't really remember anything going on. It was just like, there's like, you're up here swinging. There's like all these bright spotlights in your eyes. There's cameras coming in at all angles on you. Yeah. And like, there's producers yelling at you on the one side. Like what you don't see on TV is like, it's shot from, let me think of this for a second. So if this is a course, it's shot from this side over, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So th this is what you uh, see. The shooting from one side, right? Right. It's not from the other side. Exactly. Yeah. So the one side's all pretty and nice and people all, everything like that the other side is the producers walk through the course with you as you're running oh like, yeah all the producers are they talking to you yeah what, how are they talking to you they're are they allowed to, to talk to you i mean they do they're, 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 what are they saying if you're going too slowly tell you have to hurry up you only get a certain amount of break time between each obstacles they'll be like you gotta go you gotta go like go 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 or like they'll, they'll pull you off oh really oh the, oh they they chat to you the whole time yeah and you have to like keep that in mind while you're trying to run the course and and then your family's on the screen and then my people I train with are on the ground yelling to me. So it's just like a million things going on at one time. Yeah. Dang. So I think the hardest part was the lights. Okay. But now in the gym, we have lights set up like that. So oh, like what do you get distracted and stuff like that? Oh, so eyes. you didn't get like any nerves really or anything on that? So on, on, because there's not a lot of people there. It was COVID right. here. I think I was overwhelmed more uh -huh. than I was nervous. Okay. Like just seeing it in real life. Yeah. Um. Did you watch it back and saw yourself on TV? Yeah. Okay. I watch the videos all the time, and I'm like, oof. Like, I could have fixed this, we'll, this, this. We'll be there again? Yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, testing last mm -hmm. season, though, was what I think I needed. Okay. Just so I'm more comfortable now. Because on the show, you get one try on each on the course. Yeah. You fall, you're gone. You're gone. In testing, at least you get a week at a time yeah. to, to try out the course, try out the obstacles, and just, like, really understand, like, what it's like to be there. Because, like... Yeah. It's really just a big playground. Like you have to just look at it like it's the it's, gym. It's like, adult it's fun. playground. It's fun. Yeah. And I put a lot of pressure on first season. Yeah. And that's what made me dislike the sport for mm -hmm. a while. It's because it was too much pressure. Sure. And do you have to go through that whole process again of filling everything out yeah. each season, like your whole story? Um, they're saved like in that. the system, so okay. I go in and like tweak them. Okay. But I'm not. But you still have to submit like everything. a full form. Full form. Okay. New video. Yeah. Um, new pictures. Yeah. Then the producers call you and they ask you more questions mm -hmm. and it's what's a, what's the romance for like I guess continuing to go on and stuff like that because like it's not a huge sport and just if you look mm -hmm. at like national nationwide nationwide and like yeah. just like in general like I don't know you look at baseball you look at basketball yeah. you get these things at the highest level like you're making millions and millions right. and millions of dollars I don't know like you, if you win the whole season you make a million dollars and you have yeah. to pay half of that in taxes right. right so like what's the appeal to it. I think it's just something that's I've started the journey, yeah. so I want to just continue on it. Yeah. But also, it's brought a lot of cool opportunity to yeah. my life. Like, like what? I've met some really cool people. Like mm -hmm. some of my best friends are ninjas. Yeah. Um, I've got to go to all these different events for ninja. I mean, yeah. Vegas, Philly, all over the country for mm -hmm. ninja. Um, any city I go to, I can go to a ninja gym or a climbing gym and just fit in. See people that I know. Like okay, that too. There's so many cities across America that I could go to to a ninja gym and just know yeah three or four people so you would say you're pretty like involved in the whole ninja yeah. community and, totally yeah, now yeah. for sure like when you go to filming and stuff it's yeah. just like you create these like instant bonds with people because it's just it's like trauma bonding kind of like <laughs> you're all just there like waiting for 12 hours to run the course like Jason's nervous a trauma bon bonding if you didn't hear it guys <laughs> absolutely trauma bonding like my one friend and i we always talk about how we trauma bonded we just ate salad yeah we were just like eating our salad just like mortified about what's gonna happen that day yeah. it's like it's insane well, there's something, too, about, like, I don't know if you feel this, like, every gym that I've been a part of, if it's, like, F45, which you need to come, by the way. I know. I need to get into that. Yeah, F45. And, uh, like, or when I was, like, playing sports and playing golf in college and all these things, like, 
people who do similar things in you and like you're in the same community learning and getting better at a craft like you doing that together builds like a community that just like you need that feeling yeah you know and for me it just like gives you a support system in some way if you didn't have it through a family if you didn't have it through like like friends in school yeah. it's something special you know yeah like, and that's very much uh, here too because my whole family's in new york yeah so it's like all these people i've met at the gym it's like that's who i'm spending all my time with now it's like either when i'm climbing or ninjaing yeah. out here at the gym it's mm -hmm. like i can like when i go to my gym in hollywood to climb mm -hmm. it's like i walk in and there's familiar faces in the whole gym yeah it's like these people are pushing me to get better we're doing these things we're going out on the weekends to climb we're yeah. going to dinner afterwards it's just like you just build such a community mm -hmm. That's also a huge part of it. It's like, yeah, ninja's fun and all. Yeah. But it's like these experiences I wouldn't have without it. Sure. You know? How was uh yeah. how did you get into climbing? Just was it like a um what's it called? Cross training for like ninja? Yeah, kind of actually. So before I was really big into ninja, there was a filming out here and for A and W Junior. So it's a kid version what's, of the show. Okay. Um and um It's a warp wall like half the size. Yeah. It's like, it's like 12 feet instead of 14 okay. but there's also like an eight foot slot for like the babies oh there you yeah, go it's funny there's little little babies doing this I think shit like it's eight and nine or nine and ten ten and eleven okay. twelve thirteen so yeah like little kids yeah. little little kids they're like crying on the start line because they're so scared that's crazy like little babies um and we're at filming and i was with my one friend barclay who's really big on the show mm -hmm. and um one of another female ninja who's really talented uh, Megan Martin is a professional rock climber. Okay. She's traveled around the world, world She's championships. She's on the show too, right? Yeah. Okay. World championships, like all this stuff. She happened to be there also. Mm. And my friend Barclay was like, hey, we're going to go climb. And I'm like, you want me to climb with her? Like I've never climbed before. I'm, and you want me to go with her? And she was, <laughs> or I had climbed but like a handful of times. Like I was like trash. Sure. And she's like, yeah, come with us. And I'm like, okay. okay. At this gym? Yeah. In at Hollywood? a climbing gym. Um, no, it's actually in downtown LA. Okay. But the same gym group as What's it called? Hollywood. Uh, LA Boulders. LA Boulders. Okay. Um, but it's part of Touchstone, which has like five gyms across LA now. Okay. Um, and I was like, I guess, fine, whatever. Sure. We went. She taught me how to climb. So I was like, okay, like now I know how to climb. Like someone who actually does this for a living, like taught me how to climb. Like yeah. now I understand and now I know how to get better. Sure. So I dabbled in climbing dabbled in ninja and then started picking up both a little more seriously yeah and then um well climbing probably helped develop your strength a lot yeah. right because like i i haven't climbed in like many years but i yeah. did it like when i was in scouts growing up yeah and like i just remember like your forearms are gassed like yeah. the first like i don't know week or two yeah. after you just start exactly you yeah. know like you can't open your hands like no you're, you're like, cramping yeah I know, yeah you need to massage those guys out i know it's yeah. it's a journey for sure yeah um but honestly i'm bigger into climbing now yeah than i am ninja okay just because of the convenience factor it's convenience like also. 20 minutes for me here oh yeah so how, it's like an hour and a half drive far away yeah yeah so it's like climbing like a normal routine for you like five days a week five days a week Mm -hmm. really how does uh does it ever get boring because like i mean objectively for someone who doesn't climb that much like yeah. you're just going up yeah but every <laughs> week every week they set a new part of the gym so every week there's a new portion of the gym that has it's new climbs. different yeah okay do you so always no. go to that new part yeah yeah <laughs> it's like i warm up and i'm straight to the new part yeah sometimes i'm not even done like taking away i'll have it. to go with you in one of these yeah. times Boulder sometimes LA. they put up these like fences while they're yeah. <clears throat> setting mm-hmm Sometimes they're not even done finishing, like taking the fences away, and I'm already climbing up. Yeah. There. Um, and actually, I became friends with one of the setters too, so uh, he's been teaching me how to climb a little bit harder. How does someone teach you how to climb harder? Uh, technique. Okay. Just like everything else, there's yeah. technique, and there's there's ways of placing your weight. Okay. On the holds and body position on the wall, and just yeah. there's so much. I'm learning I, every I like, day. I like um. I like hearing about this, like with people who are into like certain sports or mm -hmm. like crafts and stuff, because like you don't really appreciate like a sport until yeah. like you experience it yourself or you know someone who under who can articulate it to you in a way that's understandable. Yeah, because you see professionals on TV and you're like, oh, that's that looks so easy. It looks for them. so easy. Yeah, you know, it looks so easy. Yeah, like you see all these gymnasts on TV and you're like, oh, I could do that. Yeah, the thing with gymnastics too, it goes so quick you can't really see all the detail in and it. And you don't understand. Especially like, we know a lot of gymnasts now and dancers. You know, and they're like, and like flipping four times. Yeah. And it's but like, you don't oh. see like all of the intricate movements no. within each flip. So fast. Yeah. And then it's it's like when you slow it down, you're like, oh shit. Or yeah. like divers too. Like that's all, oh, all, that's insane. Yeah. Also the height part scares me, dude. Yeah, I don't look down. <laughs> 
we went climbing the other day at this new gym in uh, Pasadena. Yeah. And I said, guys, these are taller than the other gym. Yeah. And they're like, it's okay. You got it. And I'm like, okay. I said, hold the rope tight for my first climb. They're like, um, what's it called? Belaying? Yeah. Belaying? Yeah. 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 I said, I don't want any do you slack. Pick, do you pick the heaviest dude and just belay you? No, because I trust the people that I, I climb with. I won't play with anyone. I won't climb with anyone. Yeah. Only like two people. Have you seen any bad uh, injuries? All the time. Oh, can you explain what like blaying is and like how to like, um, just that whole process because there's a lot of people who are not climbers out there who are listening. Yeah, so basically we're a harness. Yeah. And you're tied into the harness and it goes up to the top of the ceiling on a pulley and there's someone else on the other end of that rope. On the ground, right? Correct, on okay. the ground. So as you're climbing, they're taking all the slack in. So if you fall, they just, you know, the rope just catches you. You don't hit the ground. Yeah, and, like, they lock it, right, by, like, putting it behind their back or something. Yeah, like there's there's two different ways. But, yeah, they just the, – it's always locked while it's in this system. Okay. Um, so when you fall, it just catches you. So there's two types of climbing. There's uh, top roping and uh, sport climbing. So top roping, you don't take falls, mm-hmm. per se. Like, you kind of just – if you fall, like, you're just dangling. Yeah um because it's attached at the ceiling okay um and you don't clip anything in you just tie off and you go yeah sport climbing is where you're in charge of clipping yourself in um to carabiners along the wall along the route Mm -hmm. so sometimes those you 20 30 foot fall yeah and the other person does shoot up yeah so like you switch spots basically oh and you'll see someone hit the ground no you don't want to see that but i mean it's happened Oh, go up just because of the weight. Because of the stuff. way you're falling. Yeah. So it's not so like, on a pulley. So it's the, just a 20, 30 foot fall, and just because and just of, of the acceleration, yeah, the other person will up. fly up. Fuck. Yeah. I'm not big into that yet. I'm working my way up. <laughs> right now, we're doing. And double. what type of climbing is that? Sport climbing. Sport climbing. Okay. We're uh, working our way up there because Jason needs some extra time on that. Sure. Where I am double roped off. Yeah. Um, so one person will top rope me yeah. while the other one sport climb blaze me yeah. so I can practice clipping in as I go up the route. Sure. But if I fall, I won't drop. Have you ever climbed like outside yes. yet? Okay. That's bad. That's I did bad. so bad. Really? Yeah, because I was nervous. Yeah. I have a buddy who used to do it in, was it called Boulder? Yeah. Boulder, Colorado? Yeah. Yeah. Is it That's Colorado? A big climbing yeah, spot. I'm trying to remember. And he would climb up do that and then he would have someone like attached to him and they would do like the rope swing like off off the cliff and it i was like yo what yeah the other day we were at the gym and um it's the post in pasadena it's a new gym so it's very dead right now because they're not done fully setting up the whole gym sure and we're there and i'm watching someone sport climb and i'm watching and he said falling and i kid you not he fell 35 feet and was just like having fun with it I said, if any of you let me fall like that, there's an issue. And the dude's like, that was gnarly. And I'm like, no, like, you guys, like, no. I get nervous enough on top rope where you don't yeah. fall. Like, me letting go, like, I have an issue of letting go of the wall when I'm at the top. Yeah. Because I'm like, I'm just on rope. Like, yeah. it's not like it's, like, cable or, like, yeah. it's just rope. Is there any, like, cable gyms anymore or not really? No there's it's just rope yeah and like you can hear the creaking and the knot and stuff like that yeah, and yeah, i just i hate it yeah. i hate it but it's just I'm the getting fact that it. it's just the fact that the only thing between you and your fall is this like rope, it's just rope. <laughs> and like it's it's only this thick obviously it's like it's super a sturdy. million pound yeah, grade but yeah. like it's still only this thin yeah. and i'm like <sighs> yeah i'm like hannah yeah you got me she's like come on i'm like hannah is it good <laughs> and like come down yeah and i'm like squeezing onto the hold i can see like the fear there how was your um obviously you probably watched like alex honnold's like uh Mm -hmm. documentary free solo yeah yeah like how do you think about like free soloing stuff i don't know because like my hands were sweating when i was watching it bro my hands are sweating now (laughs) not gonna lie at first i was like oh like it looks like he's not climbing that hard like eh, like i get the appeal of it like i understand why he's doing it and then Why, why do you think he's doing it well, it's just to prove himself that he can do it. You know what I mean? Like, he yeah. just wants to prove to himself, like, I am capable of this. But I was talking to my one friend who is the setter at the gym who's... A setter. What's a setter? Yeah, he's the one who basically uh, oh, does sets the routes. The, yeah, okay, yeah, the does routes. the routes. And he, uh, he competitively climbed growing up and everything. True. And we started talking about it. And I'm like, oh, like, listen, like, it didn't look that bad. Like, I don't know why everyone freaked out. He's like, Jason, there's a bouldering part of that that's a V7 in the middle of it so grades go to 12 okay. so like a seven is like a good climber like an experienced climber like a couple of years climbing to get to a v7 okay. like that's that's an impressive grade okay 
And I said, what? He said, yeah, it's a seven. I said, so you're telling me he climbed 400 feet and then did a V7 and then climbed another 600 feet. He's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> much more impressive. But it's like we're talking about like yeah. things on TV, you can't tell the magnitude or the, the, the difficulty because sure. people just make it look so easy. Yeah. When I found out it was a V7, I said, dang, that's impressive. Like, but it, it's not that part, bro. Like the V7, cool, like whatever. But like it's how high he the was. The thousand feet The or thousand feet part, dude. Yeah, he like, was. And the, what do you have to, like, what if you're like 800 feet in the air, bro, and you just have to take a mega shit? Like, I, <laughs> I feel like though your body knows it can't. He had to have known he couldn't do that. Like, all these, like, crazy, like, free solo climbers, especially, there's that other guy who did the ice, ice rocking. Oh, um, missing a finger. No. Um, he died at, like, 19 or 20. He, oh, shoot. He, I don't know about that one. Uh, it was called the, the Alpinist. The Alpinist? Alpinist? Alp- Alpinist? Yeah, yeah. He, uh, Alex Honnold says that he is not even close to as good of a climber as, a climber as this guy. You need to watch the documentary. Okay. It's way better than Free okay. Solo. Bro. I'll watch it. And uh, I was tearing up, bro. I was crying at the end, bro, because uh, he died on a climb. No. And it was not because of his climbing. It was because there was an avalanche. So literally he could have done like he could have done it. nothing on it. About yeah. It. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. And he was by himself, of course. But um, or That's maybe tough. with one other person. But uh, yeah. And Alex Honnold said, like, he's nothing compared to this guy. That's impressive. And that that's saying something. Yeah, I know, know a couple people who've climbed with Alex Arnold. He actually was around here recently. Oh, really? He was just in. Uh, yeah, he's a. I, some some of those like climbers and stuff are just like some people who like live out of their vans and like do all that stuff. It's just like they're so different compared to like what the world says like normal is. Yeah, they're very know? socially uh, introverted. A lot of athletes, yeah. even ninja. A lot of the ninjas are very introverted. Mm. They're not social. Yeah. They're like, they go to the gym, they do their training, and they'll like, you'll just see them sitting by themselves. Well, like, you also, they don't care a lot about like what society says. No. Like at all. Ninjas either. Yeah. Some of them like, were Kinda so hi- strange. They're not, I don't, I, want, I don't want to say hippie because like hippie's not the right word that I'm trying to think about. Like they're, they're not. N- very natural. Natural? Like yeah. very like into like mother nature mm-hmm. and like minimal, um, and just like hardy yeah like a lot of climbers are hardy like they'll just go out into the middle of the woods with like a tent and just climb all weekend and climb all weekend yeah the last time (laughs) we went (laughs) two weeks ago we went climbing yeah where do you guys go three weeks four weeks big bear okay um we went rope climbing and they're like okay we're gonna go camping i was like guys that's a big push for me like camping climbing like i'm only going because i feel like you're a city boy bro yeah (laughs) camping is not no i said fine i'll go Oh, I'll yeah? Go. You went? Oh, yeah. Oh, I shouts went. out. There we go. I brought my air mattress. <laughs> they were making fun of you, probably. Oh, the air mattress barely fit in the car. There's a video of us, like, squeezing it in into the tent. I said, you guys, where's the showers? I said, where are the toilets? No showers to be seen. No toilets. I was so dirty yeah. when I got back. I said, two nights, max, done. Went up Friday evening, left Sunday morning. I said, can't do it. Can't. No. Yeah. So you never camped before? Is that your first time camping? Oh, I have. I was in Boy Scouts. Okay, you were in Scouts too. Horrible experience. <laughs> Absolutely horrible. I used to like hide and not do anything. Okay. They'd be like, "Where's Jason?" I'd just be like hiding in my sleeping bag while everyone went on a hike. I feel you. Drag my feet through the back. Oh, I was the worst. Yeah. The worst Boy Scout in America. <laughs> they used to make There's some fun pretty of me. bad ones out there. They used to make fun of me all the time. I'd be like, "You want me to clean the dishes?" No, I didn't make that mess. <laughs> I didn't eat that trash food. I'm you were not. that guy. Oh. <laughs> I was, they would, they would call my mom and be like, Oh, you definitely didn't go to Eagle Scout then. I was so close. I almost had it. They didn't let me get it because my attendance wasn't high enough. Really? Yeah. I should have had it in like ninth and grade. Oh, yeah. You got it? I finagled Dang. my way through all of them. No way. Yeah, I got Eagle. And uh, that's probably one of the coolest things that I've done, honestly. I was so... I got, and then I was like, F you guys. Yeah. I'm not staying in Boy Scouts if you're not going to let me have it. Yeah. I was like ninth grade. I could have gotten whack. it. That's whack. I had a whole sash. Um, with everything on it every single every one every merit badge oh yeah that's what's up i was a hardo so um what do you call it you went hiking and i mean you went um camping mm-hmm. and you're just like nah but the thing is like dude you're kind of different than like any like i guess like climber oh yeah no, or ninja that. guy no you know and like why do you feel like I, I guess you fit in with that crowd even though like they probably like what other medical sales rep is a ninja or yeah a, no like, it's <laughs> I definitely have, uh, I'm spread thin, I would yeah. say. Like, I don't really have a social life right now. 
mm. as much as I other people do. Sure. Um, You're just talking about going out and hanging out with all these people. I do, but like <laughs> I'm also in the gym six nights a week, sure. five nights a week. So Still. it's like work all day. Yeah. I'll go home, change, eat, and then I'm in the gym all yeah. night. Like last night I worked all day and then I climbed for five hours yeah. last night. So it's and like that's just like regimen, balance. right? Like yeah. you're not you're not even uh, trying to compete in rock climbing. Maybe one day. Okay. So it's that's coming, a, that's it's a coming fairly easy. Okay. Um, but it's just yeah, like I don't. I go out like I would say a good amount, but mm-hmm. like once ninja training starts, I don't. It's I don't it's go. like it's hardcore. Ton, tunnel for a tunnel vision. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but like I don't know, a lot of my friends they go to like these happy hours with coworkers and this that and the other, and I'm like I just don't have time right now. Like, yeah. I just want to focus on. Our bodies, I don't know. My body's not going to last much longer. Sure. Like, I'm already <laughs> falling apart. So, I'm like, let me give it one or two more good years. Yeah. And then I'll, like, live. Dude, but there's also, like, so many people who are, like, I know when I was training for marathons, mm-hmm. like, back in 2019, um, the guy who I was at the starting line with, he was in his mid-70s, mm-hmm. and he runs marathons throughout the year. Yeah. And healthy watches his diet stretches does all uh-huh. these things and he's in his mid-70s dude. that's impressive you know and there's a lot of centenarians like riding bikes still and like True. all these things True. and um it's just possible for your yeah. body to last a long time if you take care of it i hope we'll see <laughs> we'll see ninja is a different thing though like yeah i mean you could it's like, like fall gymna- and it's shit. like gymnastics yeah. like ninja gymnastics like the joints uh-huh. the tendons the ligaments like they're just like at their max capacity when you're doing these sports yeah. like you're flying 10 feet through the air catching something like this big like yeah it's just it's what do you painful. think um i guess ninja training and um climbing and that type of fitness has done for you like mentally maybe tough yeah how yeah. so because there's like everyone's like overcome all your obstacles and your fears like you literally have to yeah like ninjas literally overcoming obstacles and fears like on the daily you're 30 40 feet above the ground it's like you either catch it or you fall yeah like and let me tell you, on the show, when you fall in the water, it does not feel good. It's about three or four feet deep. Yeah. You're falling like 30 feet. So you hit the ground. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Like your ass hits the ground yeah. in the water. I thought it was deep. No. It looks deep. <laughs> the first the first two rounds are not. Vegas is deep. Okay. But Vegas, I fell like 45 feet to my head. It's, hor- it's horrible. It's horribly painful. Yeah. Dang. You're just like wiping out and just splatting. People come out like all bruised because they hit the water so hard. Like blotchy red because their their skin just smacked the water so hard what oh it's brutal yeah oh it's snap bones all the time in ninja you've all the like time. So you've seen it oh yeah yeah people come out and they're like ankles are like <gasps> i mean arms collarbones ankles feet yeah. heads i didn't even know that because you don't see like the injuries on they tv don't sh- i mean they'll show someone getting hurt yeah but you don't They'll see it, like, hit, and then, like, the replay, and then done. Like, they won't see him getting out, oh, any of that. There's wild injuries. Achilles ruptures all the time. What? Oh. Nin- climbing, too. Yeah. In the, in the climbing dim, I've been there a couple times lately, and people are, like, snapping their legs. <clears throat> like, they come up, and it's, like, 90-degree angle at the shin. Yeah. See, when you t- when I hear stories like this about, like, because I well, I've kind of always wanted to, like, try out Ninja or do all these things, and, like, you hear about it, I'm like, yeah, I'm good with, like, lifting weights, running, and swimming, and, like, doing all the things that have, like, a low probability. Like, even injury. surfing. I'm cool with surfing, bro, but then someone tells me a bad shark story, I'm like, oh, I won't go in the water for a little I bit. I don't go in the water. <laughs> I don't ask the water. But it's all about being taught properly. Taught properly. Who's yeah? You okay. got The first thing you have to learn is not how to do ninja, but it's how to fall, because okay. ninja and climbing you're going to fall. Yeah. I fall all day every day. Everyone yeah. who climbs or does ninja falls all day every day. Yeah. So like that's your fundamental thing is falling. Yeah. Right. Like we're not putting our arms back. Like, you're never putting down. Like you just roll. Like, yeah. You just get like limp. Yeah. And you fall. You embrace it. You don't fight the fall. Yeah. Because people at the gym are like stiff legging the ground. It's like you're falling twenty feet to a pad. Yes. But your legs are going to snap. Yeah. Even like, if it's a pad. Even if it's a pad. Yeah. You're going to snap. So it's like, even in Ninja. Like, yeah. How do you learn, I guess, to fall properly? Because there's so many people who do parkour. Parkour is like, when I see people do insane. like crazy parkour, insane. I'm like, how did this dude drop like 50 feet on cement and he just walked out of it? Yeah. Just, just like, nothing happened. You just have, you just learn. Like, I always like roll out or like just, yeah, crumple. Like, yeah. It's just like, you just learn your body. Yeah. Um, You never like... You never want to like fight it and be rigid. Yeah. Because like that's when you're gonna get hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, same with gymnastics, same with dance. Like you mm-hmm. always just gotta figure. You just learn. Yeah. Um, 
when you get to the climbing gym, I always, whoever I bring, I'm always like, okay, fall from this height, fall from this height, and, like, show you how to roll out of it, show yeah. you how to fall feet to butt, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's almost like as soon as your feet are touching the ground, you want to just lean back and sit. Yeah. Like, that's how sure. you're not gonna, You're dispersing your weight, you know? Yeah. People who fall on one leg, like, yeah, you're going to get hurt. All your weight is going oh, down. That, that one. That one yeah. joint. Yeah. So there's just different ways and different techniques of falling. Yeah. But, like, if you don't learn that, you're going to get hurt. Do you, Have you ever gotten hurt at all? Like, any injury? I mean, yeah. I've hurt my hand. Uh, but nothing crazy. I tweaked my ankle. Uh, That's it? Knock on wood. Nothing yeah, crazy. Yeah, all yet. good. Uh, yeah, what do you call it? There's so many people. Like, I feel like climbing is, like, a, such a big sport now. That's kind of, like, yeah. it's everyone's climbing. It's growing. I don't know why. Yeah. It's, like, trendy right now. Yeah, like, everyone I know is, like, oh, I just got into climbing or, like, all these things. It's so trendy, and I don't know what the appeal I is. I think it is because how you said you don't really like going to like a normal gym or yeah, like really working out i think that's the reason yeah like people like want to do things like my parents bro like they just started working out with me and they hate it <laughs> like they absolutely hate they've been working out with me over zoom at their own gym and for like over about a year now they're killing it they're cute yeah. they like do their little zoom video yeah. they're swinging some kettlebells but my mom is obsessed with pickleball obsessed <laughs> dude no way. she'll play like eight hours straight of pickleball. Of pickleball. <laughs> Running yeah. back and forth. Bah, bah, bah. She got like a, a gold medal like probably like two months ago <laughs> at this like little tournament. And she's just like so ecstatic. Like, I'm bro. a pickleball champ. Yes. <laughs> that's exactly. She's pushing 60, dude. And she's just in love with it. And like if you find that thing, if you yeah. find like your ninja training or right. that rock climbing or that right. pickleball, dude, like you could stay like fit. Like you, if you find that one thing, that's your fitness. You're you know? so fit. There's, yeah. there's like so many ways now for older people to stay fit it's yeah. wild there's there's older people at the gym climbing i'm like what like what, what was like the oldest age that you I mean, see there's like old people like 50s and 60s like yeah yeah i would say 50s not that old <laughs> but to be climbing a, a wall i don't know i don't see myself climbing a wall at 50 why not like walking a treadmill maybe riding hmm, a peloton bro <laughs> people are gonna be living until like 150 right now <laughs> true, true, true. like we're getting there yeah your um, med sales come on now bro you don't want to know that about that. That's a <laughs> what are you talking about the surgeries and stuff? I was like, how are you in the surgeries while doing med sales? Like, why why do you take part in that? So like, my my branch of med sales is a, a lot less sales, mm. but it's more clinical, okay, and product based. Sure. So, so like the actual machines and stuff like that. So I used to do machines. Okay. Um, now I do a different product that carries antibiotics. Okay. Well, it, you can add antibiotics to it. Okay. <laughs> uh, and it basically delivers antibiotics to a surgical site. Okay. Um, to eradicate infection. Okay. Uh, works. The amount of antibiotics that it takes to kill the infection, if you ate it orally or you had it IV, it's too strong and it's toxic for your body. Okay. But if it's at the site, um it's there's no danger at the site like just in the room so if you had a hip surgery we sprinkle these beads okay. in your incision okay and over six to eight weeks your body will decompose and process those beads versus like an injection right. or anything like so that so it'd be it'd be toxic to your kidneys and, okay. your, and your intest your intestines your so body so you have to be there on site yeah for most of the surgeries yeah. stuff like that do you like it love yeah yeah it's a little it's a little brutal how so um a lot of hours in the OR on your feet. Yeah. Uh, it's cold. It's the it's, fumes. Yeah. It's like, it's definitely something that's hard. Mm -hmm. um, but like I was in surgery today from 1030 until Yeah, this dude was six. texting me. He was like, bro, it's a like, tough I'm day, late. dog. Yeah, I'm like, I'm late. <laughs> Tomorrow's going to be the same though. Uh, but it's cool because you have a lot of freedom. Like I don't necessarily have to go to surgery every day. Yeah. But like my surgeons, like you become part of the team. Mm-hmm. And, like, even the PA today, she scrubbed out, and she was like, I'll see you tomorrow. And I'm like, Lisa, I didn't even know you had a case tomorrow. She's like, yeah, you'll be here, right? And I'm like, yeah, I'll <laughs> see you tomorrow, Lisa. Like, can't wait. That's so weird uh, having different dynamics, I guess, like, from, like, a OR room to uh, a climbing gym, like, in one day. I know. It's everyone I never at the gym. Yeah. I mean, everyone at the OR knows about it, too, because, yeah. like, they have me on Facebook, and they're always, like, reposting my ninja <laughs> stuff and everything. And I go, go into, Jason, go! I come in and, like, oh, ninja's here. Like, that's my nickname in the hospital. Oh, that's cute. They're like, ninja! Yeah. And I'm like, hey, guys. They're like, what'd you climb last night? Show us. Yeah. And they'll make me pull on my phone and show them all my videos from training and stuff like that. Yeah. So they're supportive. It's really cool. That's awesome. The surgeons, like, repost my Facebook posts. And no stuff. way. And I'm like, this is wild. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. It's that's another cool. community. Yeah. Kind of yeah, that is. Yeah. My team at Keck, like, all over. Yeah. Is it kind of weird how, like, um, 
uh i guess you were like in connecticut moved to san diego and then kind of like everything fruitioned into la like your job and like yeah. this ninja community and climbing community everything's like here i know my mom when i go home every time she's like so uh how much longer are you gonna live in la like forever what what brings you there and i'm like mom what brings me there i'm like the people you meet are awesome you yeah. get to meet people from I mean, TV to movies yeah. to actors to singers to da- you meet everyone. Yeah, and like you get to go to all these crazy events in LA, like red carpets. I mean, like these houses and the hills, like just all this random stuff you get to go to and experience. Like, there's no other cities like that. In That's the US. a better answer. Every time my mom asks me that, I just say I just like it. But <laughs> I, th- just so that is much. the answer. There's so much. Like some of my personal training clients are very big, like agents of movie stars. You know, exactly. like um, the people you meet in restaurants or like anything like that. Like, I I would bartender for like Kanye West at my bar like right. almost every day for a long period of time it's just like weird because all these people that you saw on tv or growing up are like the people you kind of idolize but now you're just like normal people they're so normal like when you live in LA you're desensitized to yeah. famous people like yo everyone's famous bro sometimes I'll still get a little bit excited like, give, me, give, me, give me one person I got really excited to meet Jordan Sparks oh American really Idol. yeah I was well, season early early eight she was early yeah She's tall, so, bro. She's like <laughs> six one. I was like, really? Up at, oh, Jordan yeah. Sparks? No, I'm talking about like you, you're a big fan of her. Yeah, from that, and she did a bunch of Broadway shows. Like, okay, she was she's very talented. If you, if, you, if you ever want to meet her again so my old neighbor was the pianist on american idol and he really? he he sang he uh was the vocal coach like behind really? everybody there yeah really? behind, behind, the, behind the scenes his name's michael orlin and yeah, he was like so dope yeah she was just at his house the other day really yeah she's so dope we hung i hung out with her for a while oh yeah at an event yeah that's crazy i was like i was like I why were you my... such a big fan like what out of all the people i would i would have thought like i don't know like a oh, justin yeah. Timberlake or a britney spears I'm or something like think, that well, i met steve urkel yeah, Urkel comes into Lavo all the time. Does he? I don't, I don't know his internet in actual name. name. He was on Ninja Set. Uh, yeah, he lives. Uh, he lives in West Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah, he just he walks to Lavo <laughs> every uh, probably like I four times a week. I need to come to Lavo now. Huh? I need to come to Lavo. Dude, uh, sit at the bar, bro. Okay. I'll hook it up. <laughs> um, who else? I've met so many. But um, like, uh, in terms of, it's just like big, mo- most, just like most times though, like it's like, hey, what's up? I know, and they're just normal. They're like, hey, yeah. how are you? Like, yeah. what's going on? Yeah. Because like, I don't know. I tell my mom about like something that happens over here. She'll get like, oh no way, blah 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 blah. <laughs> you and know? Like, no, it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Even like Ninja Gym, like a lot of the like TikTokers and all these people always are asking to come to the gym to just try it out. Really? Yeah. All these actors and actresses, like. Yeah. I met some people from uh, Modern Family at the mm-hmm. gym. Like. Yeah. People are always a shameless. One of the guys from Shameless climbs at my gym. Oh yeah, which guy? I probably the the fuzzy hair guy. He looks like a yeah, climber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's so many people at the climbing gym. Yeah, you would never. Um, it, um, I'm gonna have to think for a second. He's really famous. Um, he was in uh, Gilmore Girls and a bunch of movies. Oh, I know who you're talking about. I don't know his name. Is it guy? No. I don't know. Ventimiglio. Is that his name? That's his last name. I can't think of his first name. We'll look it up after. Yeah. <laughs> but I went climbing with him, and he left, and my friend was like, do you know who that was? Oh, Milo. Milo Ventimiglio. There you go, yeah. He's been in freaking everything. Yeah. And I'm like, no, your friend? Yeah. She was like, no, 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 look him up. And I was like, Ugh. I was like, he's so cool. Like, he's people just are like, normal here, dude. People are so normal, and yeah. everyone thinks celebrities aren't normal. I mean, I'm sure there's some that aren't normal. Yeah. But most of the celebrities are so cool. Yeah. It was weird. Like, I went home for a holiday, and um, my cousin's really into gymnastics. Uh-huh. And um, he was talking about Kate. Mm-hmm. And, like, my sister knows that, like, me, we're friends with Kate. Yeah. And she was like, oh, just, this was just weird. It's I was just, just like, oh, we hang out all the time. Actually, I was, I did watch UCLA Gymnastics mm-hmm. when she was still there. And I was oh, like, you did? Needs. Oh, yeah, for sure. I love gymnastics. And you didn't know her at the time? No. Okay. I didn't meet her until... Melise was my roommate was on tour with her yeah and we facetimed and everyone would be like who's that who's that and she was like it's jason my roommate and then like we kept facetiming throughout the tour throughout the tour and by the end of the tour everyone's like can we facetime jason <laughs> and they would call me and i'd be talking and i'm like this is wild like y'all See, isn't are, like... it weird it's and then, so weird and then dude. like caitlin's just calling me all the time like what are you doing yeah uh, are you coming over this weekend let's like, go and i'm like it's just so weird because they're just so normal. But like, I was so mad at you the other day what? because uh, she was supposed to style me for something, right? And you took her out drinking on the west side. Oh, no. 
<laughs> and she was like, she FaceTimed me. You guys were completely blacked out. Was and, this the Friday? Uh, uh, the Friday that we went to happy hour. Yes, the Friday. This was yeah. And she was like, I'm in West Side. Like, I think I can make it there in five minutes. And I was like, <laughs> no, you can't, I'm in can't. North Hollywood, bro. <laughs> She was like, it's Jason's fault. Don't blame it on me. No, it was her idea to go to happy hour. Don't even. She was like, how about we go out around 3 or 4 tomorrow? And I said, Caitlin, what? 3 or 4 p.m.? And then Fish met us and like it just like spiraled down. That's what it was. So I, I needed like an old school bartending outfit yeah. for like I was um, judging like a bartending mm-hmm. competition. And I, I ended up making it work out. But I was just like, no, you guys have fun. Like, <laughs> But we committed to this like probably for like a week or two. <laughs> And so she, she blamed it all on you, bro. Of course she did. <laughs> Caitlin, I'm coming for you, okay? She has pretty good fits. I mean, like, she just her style and fits. stuff like that. She has fire fits. Like, some stuff, like, I I want to go visit her in Seattle. And, like, uh, thrift shopping's, like, I didn't know it was a thing, really, until, like, I met her. And, like, yeah. cool vintage shit's awesome. But she'll buy, like, I don't know, this, like, wool, like, this hat that has a ton of fur. And this, like, oversized, probably, like, coat that's, like, to her ankles. And <laughs> then know. she throws it on. I'm like... It that actually that looks works. Good. It actually <laughs> looks good on you, Kate. I know. Yeah. She just like throws it on. Yeah. Done. Boom. What are you most excited for in your life right now, bro? Just like in in general, because like objectively, like sounds like you got a good job. Yeah. Sounds like you're kind of into this fitness stuff, yeah. like kind of getting into whatever, and you have good friends, it's a good community. Like, what's next, or what are you most excited for? Mm-hmm. What's next? I would love to work with some athletic brands yeah. in the future. Oh, like a like a sponsor or something? Yeah, for Do sure. That. Some climbing companies mm-hmm. or some... Would you have to like promote yourself on social media a little bit more? Yeah, but also it's such a niche, what I do, mm-hmm. that I think it's marketable mm-hmm. enough. Yeah. If I can get the right platforms to like post about me, yeah. these brands, no one's representing them mm-hmm. in the sports. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like no ninjas even have the accessibility of living in LA. Like, I feel like that's such a major thing. It's like being no nin- out here. No ninjas? No, but like no just... one really lives out here. Oh, is that, that's probably why there's no uh, no ninja gym in LA. Because no one's out here. That was, that was shocking because out of all places in the world, I'd feel like there would be a ninja gym in LA. Right, and there's no one out here to represent the community. And like, I feel like that's so, so fundamental. So do you know anywhere, do you, besides yourself, do you know anyone really? I mean, there's a couple of us throughout, but like, as far as I live out here in LA, no. They're all in like either Orange County or out by the gym. Like mm-hmm. no one's in LA. Okay. I mean there's actually Jesse does live in Jesse Manhattan Beach Craft. Okay. She's probably like the most famous ninja. The blonde jack yes. chick. But she she doesn't really train as much as she does stunts. Oh, so she's, she's a stunt woman yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. That's why so, she's in like kinda yeah. Hollywood area. So she's always stunting, mm-hmm. always missing seasons of ninja, obviously. Like she's gotta make her money and do her stunts and do yeah. her, her Be- brand deals. Because I feel like uh, ninja is like nothing compared to like stunt woman money. No. And she's doing like Wonder Woman. Yeah. And like Transformers and like Dee. big movies. So That's she's awesome. making bank. Yeah. And then I have another friend, Tiana, um, who lives in Santa Clarita. Uh, same thing. She's doing all these huge blockbuster movies. So it's yeah. like they don't have time to train ninja, you yeah. know? I mean, I don't really have time either, but we all make it work somehow. But you train like five days a week. Yeah. Yeah. But not ninja. How would you train ninja and make it more accessible for you? Like here. If I didn't have a job. <laughs> if you didn't have a job? Yeah. That's basically it. That's the only way. Or but if you, I was coaching ninja. But you have weekends. But coaching ninja is like no money compared to like a medical sales job, right? Right. But I could train all day. Yeah. And all night. Um, weekends, <laughs> yeah. But I can't train three days in a row. Ninja. Okay. Why not? my your body would crumble really it's that taxi on the body yeah yeah um i can climb three days in a row climbing is my max too. yeah it's usually three on one off we gotta get you to working out why, do, why don't you like muscles by the way like i don't know if we were like high or drunk one day and you're like, <laughs> like I, don't know. I was talking I, about pull-ups because i was uh, i think the t- the first time we met which was like probably three or four kate kate, kate parties parties ago, parties ago. <laughs> That's how we consider. That's how we uh, declare time. Declare how many, time. Kate, parties how many kate parties go? Um, I was talking about like I had this goal of getting to uh, fifty pull ups, right? Yeah. And I I got to thirty three, and we we're okay. talking about That's it. Big. Yeah, it was good, but I gained some weight. I'm kind of like deep back to like twenty four, twenty five. We're still good. Yeah, I'm a little fruity right now too. But uh, you were like, yeah, I would never do that. And I was like, why? You're like, I hate muscles. Yeah, and I, I, I I've never heard anyone say that, bro. Except for like the girl who's super skinny and likes her little waist or her anything. Waist. I, I don't like muscles. I don't you know? know. I just feel like 
some people look good with them, and I just feel like sometimes like ninja and climbing, like you just get like. These bro, you flex gnarly, your abs all the time though. Look at your Instagram, bro. You, you got Those are fine. Like my back fine. and stuff. <laughs> like it's getting the like I chafe now mm-hmm. under my arms because yeah. like. There's no room. There's no room. You get a little stretch mark in there. Yeah. You got some lats, bro. Yeah. You got so the little like, V shape. <laughs> the lats. Um, Guys like it in West Hollywood, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you get something to grab onto, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like they're like, when I watch my videos, it's like, there's like little creatures under my skin. Yeah. Like they're like moving around. Like you, yeah. you can see all these like lines and I don't know. They're just like, a, yeah. I don't know. A little weird. Yeah. They like creep me out a little bit. Yeah. <sighs> That's, you're weird, bro. But that's how all my back <laughs> is now, so it's like I've just come to terms with come it. Come to terms with it's it. Like, yeah, for someone who, like, shredded. the thing is, like, for you not lifting, like, a ton of weight yeah. or anything like that, like, anyone who's, like, in the fitness and, like, saw you be like, oh, that dude works out all the time. But I don't in, lift ever. Yeah, in reality, you just do the things that you wanted. You found yeah. that, like, thing that's just, like, a fitness yeah. lifestyle. Exactly. But I do need you know? to start lifting. Yeah, I I think it helps for I think it adds it adds to like yeah. climbing or like um and ninja training. The only downside to it is like when you eat a lot plus work out, you get too big. Yeah. And like I think like bigness just objectively like doesn't really help in those two areas no, of sport, it won't. right? The bigger the bigger boys struggle. Yeah. Um I want to tone up a little bit. Tone like up. I definitely need to been drinking too much or what? <sighs> Or eating too many french fries? McDonald's is my weakness. Is it really? Oh, I'm obsessed. Girlfriend all the time, bro. I Before I started dating her, I would never... I haven't eaten McDonald's in probably like three years or Taco Bell. It's probably like a every other week thing. And she's like, we'll get high. And she's like, oh, you know what sounds good? I was like, McDonald's. McDonald's. <laughs> all my friends, like, they make She's like, now. nugs in an Oreo McFlurry, bro. <laughs> oh, see? We talk about the Big Macs. You like Big Macs? If you don't Big Go Mac in. it up, you're Big Mac, is, do you get some fries too? You go in. Oh, I get a Big Mac fries, McChicken. Yeah. The Coke there Dude, is d- insane. Dancers. Dancers love their Coke, bro. And their, Dancers uh, love it, junk food. They love junk food. And the only reason why they could get away with it is because they move so fucking much, They do bro. like eight hours of cardio. Yeah. I think Malise said on, on uh, the Simone tour they ran seven miles in one show. Like, did someone track it? Yeah. Uh, Fitbit, Fitbit. Apple Watch. And they just the Every steps. show was seven miles. No way. Well, they were doing a, it was an arena tour. Yeah. So they were up and down the tumble track. Oh, seven miles. That's a lot. That's a lot. And that's just a show. Like, they never mind. It. They can <laughs> eat whatever they want. It. Yeah. They were shredded. Yeah. That's why you see, like, athletes. Like, I have a lot of friends who ran track yeah. in, like, UCLA. String beans. Str- no, they were just shredded, right? Were they? No, yeah. They were shredded. Really? They were shredded. They worked out hard. They yeah. ran all these things uh i'm talking about like sprints Sprinters. okay, okay. Not i'm distance. not talking about long distance long distance like string this. beans bro <laughs> different type of running different <laughs> string, beans. <laughs> string beans but no like these athletic people they would just eat hella drunk food all the time because really? they can afford it right but like you fast forward to whenever we graduated to right now yeah. like you look at them they haven't touched any weight or, or f- ran anything and they're and, still shredded no oh they're extremely because they kept the same diet uh-huh but they don't run seven miles a day on stage anymore. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So now they're thinking they can eat whatever they want, yeah. but they really shouldn't be eating whatever they want. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you, you have to like see where you're yeah. at. <laughs> in ninja training, Karen yeah. used to bribe us with like In-N-Out or Chick-fil-A. She's like, if you guys do good, I'll go to In-N-Out tonight. Was that motivating? Oh, yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> hell yeah. Here I go. Boom, boom, yeah. boom, done. I'm like, where is it? She's yeah. like, okay, I'm going. <laughs> yeah. And she would go bring us back. I love that. All right, and is there any like fitness goals or like life goals that you're like striving for? Like for me, I set like, for me, like one year was to like set, do, land that backflip, right? Yeah. It's just random shit for me. Like it's not necessarily like I need to get it by this time or whatever. Yeah. Like for me, it was like, oh, I'm going to run a marathon or try to do a handstand yeah. or like yeah. whatever. Do you have any, anything yeah, like that? Yeah, I want to break double digit bouldering double digit bouldering so that's yeah. you said it's to 12 right yeah. 10 to 12 and do they set any of those like at the gym mm-hmm. okay so, so so some of the walls you can't climb like yeah you, you haven't conquered routes, yeah i'm like eight nine now yeah so i think by the end of the year i could do a 10 oh really that's my goal yeah yeah by the end of this year to do a 10 i want to go with you we're gonna go that's my that's my i was working on 11 yesterday okay um but 10 I want to attend before the year ends. Do you have any advice for, I guess, like a little kid or people who in areas who don't have like ninja training or like rock climbing gyms, like where to start or like how to get into it? 
Yeah, I mean, playgrounds. Playgrounds? I mean, yeah, playgrounds are a great space to just mess around. Yeah, um, just have fun. Yeah, and you don't have to use a playground like it's designed either. Yeah. Like, you have all these poles, and you have these different vertical horizontal areas. Like, mm-hmm. you can really use any of it. You know what yeah. I mean? You can you can even order holds online, and there's got to be a way that you can hang them up on a, along a playground somewhere. You know what yeah. I mean? There's monkey bars. Hang it from the monkey bars to hold and just yeah. go up and down that. Or, I mean, there's just so many resources online. Mm-hmm. On YouTube, if you can just look up Ninja Workouts or, yeah. like, different programming that you can do that will help. I mean, yeah. just pull-ups alone yeah. is the foundation of Ninja. As mm-hmm. bad as I am at pull-ups, honestly, <laughs> that is, that's the foundation of pull-ups. You heard it, guys. He, he likes pull-ups. We're good. That's, <laughs> that's the only thing I wanted to hear out of Jason's mouth. Everyone by the makes day. me do them. <laughs> Ugh, we're at the climbing gym, and we'll be like, okay, burnout time. And I'm like, have fun. It's like you're doing pull-ups today. And I'm like... There's Fine. probably a climber out there who Fine. could knock out like 50 straight for sure. Easy. Yeah. Or like the muscle ups, the strict muscle ups. The strict muscle climbers, ups. Or like the levers. Like, so my gut is too big for that. Yeah. I used to be able to do a front lever. I can't do it anymore. Yeah. It's kind of like a V lever. A v, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me too. You just your butt's down. <laughs> it's like, but yeah, uh, playgrounds. I mean, that's I like. I think YouTube's the best teacher though, like with anything. Like, YouTube and playgrounds. I mean, yeah. the. The options are unlimited at a playground. Yeah. I mean, you, even the poles that just go straight up, you mm-hmm. could just climb that all day. And, like, that's still building some sort of muscle that you didn't have before that in an yeah, area that you didn't yeah. know you had. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, Do you think flexibility plays a big role at all or no? For some. Yeah. I think, though, there's a, there's a good balance between flexibility and strength. I think yeah. that when you get too flexible, you do lose some strength. I do see, like, some rock climbers, though, that, like... Full they, splits. They put their full splits, like, full splits. by their head. Full I was splits. like... They do is that. that you? Can you do no, that? No, no flexibility. <laughs> I can whack my leg up, but I can't stretch I don't even know my leg. No, whack my leg up. Just like <laughs> kick it high, but I can't like split. Yeah. No, I'm working on it though. Flexibility, yeah. but I think I think flexibility does take away some power. How so? I just think that your muscles aren't built to be flexible and strong. Is that scientific or is that just your opinion? I've I've seen it even in dancers. Okay, really. Like the really flexible, like bendy dancers, they mm-hmm. don't they don't seem to have like the amplitude of like their leaps and stuff like mm. others. Even gymnasts too, like like Simone's not flexible. Is she not? No. She looks like a, for a gymnast. She looks sturdy. She is. She looks sturdy. She's strong and powerful. Have you seen her in person? Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, during the tour. Yeah. Okay. Did they come to LA? Mm-hmm. Okay. They came to LA and then I went to OC to see them. Sweet. Um. But she's she's nowhere near as flexible as some of the other gymnasts. But mm. she makes up for it in her power. No. Um. I just don't think muscles are like the way that muscles work. Mm-hmm. I don't think if you overstretch them, they're gonna have the same elasticity as they would if you don't yeah. overstretch them. Yeah. I think that's just how it is. Um. Even seeing some of the repairs that we see in in the OR. Somewhat. Repairs. Repairs. Yeah, like Achilles repairs and mm. all this stuff. Like after the surgery, it's like they even say sometimes like a fixed achilles is stronger than a natural achilles oh really obviously like we just went in and manipulated it yeah. but it's never going to be as flexible mm. as it was originally um but it's stronger do you actually witness like the surgeries going on oh yeah like full on open and everything fully does that not gross you out at all so normal really oh yeah you have to like dodge the blood sometimes they're like flicking shit at you like, ooh, ooh. but you won't go camping no <laughs> no camping that was a low blow no camping no no it couldn't be me i did it though <laughs> That's awesome, dude. It was tough. What do you call it? Um, yeah, man. Well, I think that's it. I think that was a good conversation. I appreciate you for coming. Yeah, I'm going to go climb with you. Me. Let's and go climb. Yeah. All right. So where can everyone find you? Uh, Instagram, Jason Grossman. Jason Two Grossman. S's. Any TikToks? Are you on TikTok yet? I use TikTok. Dude, you have to get those brand deals. I know. All right. So next time we'll have you on, you're going to be winning American Engine Warrior, and yeah. uh, we're going to have some brand deals. A million bucks All right. coming for Jason you. Jason Grossman, everybody. Peace. Perfect. Thank you. See you, brother.